Hello and welcome to another edition of Crash. Plenty of action coming your way in the next half an hour as we hit not only the beach, but quite literally the racetrack as well. Every year, hundreds upon hundreds of motorcycle enthusiasts take to the sands at Western Supermare in England to ride one of the toughest races on the motorsport calendar. All sorts take part, from top-class professional racers to those who like a quick blast on a Sunday. And the Western Beach Race could be anything but a quick blast. Some more riders having difficulties, and that's... I just saw a Kawasaki going back with... Oh, indeed. That's a novel way of getting the bike down! Oh, my goodness! Competitors travel hundreds of miles, even from abroad, to take part, and many fail to complete a lap. It's stop time. Stefan Evitz is coming in. David Knight's already been in. And here's the man who's leading, David Knight, bike number three. Goggles still around his neck. Yes, David does. Uh, oh, oh, he is human. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <that's> totally <laughs> unexpected. As the race goes on, conditions worsen, the sand becomes sludge, and tiredness plays its part. What would be going through your mind at this point, Jason? I think the, the need to go home, probably, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> this endurance test of man and machine eventually ends. Plenty of aching limbs and broken bikes. And, of course, one race winner. The kids also get a go at tackling their own course. Yet this is anything but a playground, as the youngsters find out. Oh, another one goes down. But here is the race at the front. Callum Cooper. Oh! oh. Callum Cooper drops it. And there's the madness of the quads as well. Going, going, gone. You may think four wheels is better than two. Think again. By the way, these aren't the race winners. They get a trophy just for getting to the end in one piece. The action at Weston isn't confined to the beach. There's always plenty to see and break elsewhere. Q, 29-year-old French-Canadian Christian Gagnon of the H-Bomb Display Squad. Thousands have gathered to see him attempt a backflip on a quad bike. That's a loop-the-loop, -loop, a 360-degree turn. Please note, I said he'd attempt a backflip. Everything was going well until this point. As helpers rush to his aid, Gagnon rides about in agony. No one's sure about his condition. Let's look again at this horrific accident. Gagnon speeds towards the ramp and takes to the air. But at his highest point, he and the bike park company, he lands heavily on the ramp and the quad smashes into him, forcing him down and onto the ground. His injuries, nothing more than a broken leg and a sprained wrist. Now rally drivers are always crashing their cars, the first opportunity they get. Starting. Some are addicted to it and like to park their cars in hedges, even at slow speeds. 
It even gives them a chance to swear. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's knack of that, Steve. And they love swearing almost as much as crashing. Right, take it easy. Let's see if we can get through. Let's see that high-speed bit of parking again. We've got all the ingredients, the car, the drivers, the conditions, and the obstacle. Here's another example of how rally drivers love crashing and hate turning corners. And then scare your co-driver some more. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way, no, don't go down further. Ah, fucking bastard. You somehow think he should have listened. On the racetrack, no one wants to crash their car, especially if it's a Lamborghini. Doesn't always work out like that, though. It's the classic lock-up into a corner. Every racing driver has done it at some point and is likely to do it again in future. If you're addicted to crashes, then the Macau Grand Prix is the place to be, especially the corner at Lisboa. This is the international F3 race, and you can see from the markings and cement on the road that this driver is the Ben's latest, and certainly not last, victim. The mishaps are not restricted to that corner. Oh no, there's plenty more around the Macau circuit, often with race car crushing consequences. They're not too perturbed. They've seen this sort of thing plenty of times, and now we shall. A high impact collision which the driver thankfully walked away from. There's a lot of risk-taking in motorsport. That's what makes it so exciting. But risks are exactly that. They are risks and can often end in very painful circumstances. Thankfully, not every time, though. Let's watch again as the drivers approach the bend. One dives up the inside. But contact is made, and they both go spinning out. Some drivers just don't learn, though. This is the very same race, but slightly different consequences. It could have been costly, but thankfully wasn't. This speed is called, and they drove away. Sometimes you can be driving along, minding your own business, and someone ahead of you gets it wrong, but they get away with it, and you pay the price. Here come some very nice-looking, expensive sports cars, and if you've ever wondered what's under the bodywork, well, we're about to find out at this meeting at the world-famous Monza circuit in Italy. This looks like a case of nudge-nudge, wink-wink, and definitely say no more. That's it for this part of the show, but stick around as we've more of the same coming right at you after this break. Welcome back to the show, which does not have a problem with being daubed car crash TV, because that's exactly what it is. We start this time in Northern Ireland, a part of the world where they love more than their fair share of motorcycle racing, but unfortunately get more than their fair share of rain. And this tends to happen quite often. 
Here's Isle of Man TT winner Adrian Archibald about to park company with his Honda. A classic low side brought on by the wet conditions. He gets up, but his bike has given him a love bite on the neck. Explain that one to the missus. Here's Archibald again, chasing longtime rival Ryan Farquhar. They both find a way of stopping without relying fully on their brakes. On board with Archibald, and you can just about see Farquhar ahead. Then he gets very close indeed. Let's look again as Archibald tries to gain ground, but breaks far, far too late. Nice to see, though, number 22, Gordy Taylor, stop to check if they're both OK. Did I say rally drivers like to crash their cars? Sorry, I meant to say rally cross. Not content to rip parts of the circuit away, such as crash barriers or straw bales, they like to tear lumps out of each other as well. This is typical of a rally cross meeting. Sorry, you just can't park there. I've just been handed a note suggesting I'm coming up with some sort of conspiracy theory regarding rallycross drivers and crashing. Well, here's some more proof. This is multiple champion and rallycross legend Dermot Carnegie. Ah, oh, their arms are all tired from that flag waving. This is, in fact, a rubber reunion when the tyres on Dermot Carnegie's car decide to get together with the tyres which make up the barrier. The American Le Mans series is one of the fastest growing motorsports, which is grabbing more worldwide attention each year. Many follow it just to see these mega quick and super expensive cars race, some just to see them crash. We get the green flag, Emmanuel Ferro looking very strong into the first turn. He's got the inside line and squeezes past JJ Leto to take the lead. It was James Weaver, then Guy Smith in fourth place. Now, oh, there's a huge crash for Johnny O'Connell in the number three car. And that's at turn 17. The lights are flashing. That suggests he's trying to get the car going again. But that was quite a big impact. Luckily, there is a lot of tyres there, as you can see, these double banded tyres. There's a lot of water came out. Here's a replay, and that looks like the brake disc on the front left-hand side broke. There was certainly a lot of brake dust came out of that. And problems for Jeff Butner, who has spun out and stopped because the rear bodywork has come off of that miracle car. Here's a replay just coming over the top, and look at the force and the momentum that that flies off with, sends him into a spin, and very lucky not to have a very nasty crash. Oh, and that is the 43 car and the 20 car, and uh, they, well, it's hard to say, but uh, Emmanuel Pira, got, here's a replay on board Emmanuel Pira. Now, the two cars ahead of him touch, and he ends up kicking the back of the 43 car. Oh, problem. Problem, and he's gone off. Oh, he's been hit. No, uh, well, he either has been hit or he has hit the number five Pacific Motorsports car, and that happens right after he came out of the pit entry. And uh, here we go, you see, Marco stays on his line. Alex Figgy was committed to that corner. He was at speed as well, and uh, maybe he wasn't expecting the Audi to pick up speed that quickly, but it's pretty blind around that corner. It is very difficult. Accidents are part and parcel of racing. And sometimes it's not the driver's fault when things go wrong, as we can see.
this was one of those occasions that can happen to any competitor. And it's up to the driver to react to the situation the best they can. Just watch as the bodywork and spoiler fly off the back of the car, making it impossible to control. It was 175 miles an hour when I hit the camera on the wall and uh, we got a lot of damage. I uh, hurt my neck quite badly as well, so uh, it's been very sore and also the knees. So uh, it hasn't been easy 10 days, but it's, uh, it's getting better now. Oh, that's a fire for the number 37 car, Liz Halliday, just towards the uh, pit entry. A lot of smoke, big fire on board that Lola and this little car is a light. Well, Liz still inside the car now, the flames are engulfing it, and that's blocked off the pit lane. Uh, she gets out rather quickly, and uh, the car now rolling back onto the track, well, she's uh, rightly or wrongly trying to stop it going back into uh, the uh, uphill section of the track. As always, the uh, safety workers and the fire people are so quickly at hand on the track, and uh, the team watching avidly inside the uh, pit lane at what's going on. We saw in the in-car camera she had some smoke coming up through the cockpit. We didn't know really what it was. And then the outside shot showed uh, a pretty, you know, uh, big fire in the back. So uh, I don't know what happened. We, you know, had to wait to get her back to see what happened. Hopefully she's all right. I think she is. But uh, uh, it's too bad, you know. I mean, uh, we were, had a really good race going on. Liz was just doing her thing. And, uh, you know, it's too bad. But uh, oh well. Away we go, and it's three abreast into turn one. The side deck in the middle, James Weaver on the outside. JJ Leto coming through, there's been a crash. They've touched together. Leto hard into the tyre barriers. Big damage to the Audi on turn one of lap one of the Petit Le Mans. JJ Leto shakes his head. The side deck crippled also, and along the side of the track. But James Weaver has got away cleanly. The number two Audi behind him. It's the 20 car with Chris Dyson in third place. JJ Leto trying to get that car back to the pits. And look at the damage. That is the third major, make that the fourth major incident we've seen for the Audis this year. And can JJ Leto make it back to the pits to get that repaired? Here's a replay from the front. And possibly contact with all three cars, I think. Possible contact with all three, but two of them went off big style. And James Weaver continued, and uh, what an incident. JJ Leto on board, turns on the inside, touches, spins, and just whoa, waits for the big impact. And luckily, the car keeps going and uh, re well, restarts it to keep it going. And that look at the damage to that beautiful car. Uh, oh, and in the gravel goes Nick Johnson. That's at the bottom of, let's turn 10 down the bottom of the hill. And the Porsche firmly ensconced in the kitty litter, as they would say. And something seemed to lock up on the back of that Porsche that takes some big air as it hits the gravel. Here's a replay. Goes to pass the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin, uh, it appears, has hit him from the side. And, um, well, hard to say. Hard to say, but you have to point the finger at the Aston Martin there. And into the pit lane with damage once again comes JJ Leto. There's the scar from the side of the Aston Martin. JJ Leto was saying he's ready to go home. Shakes his head as the team have a look at this car. It's off to Asia next. They certainly know how to crash here as well, which just goes to show we don't have things all our own way in the West. The opening lap of an Asian motocross championship race. And that sure looks painful. The Asian series is unique as they also get points for spectacular crashes. They're not big on sympathy, though. The marshal makes sure the bike is OK. Well, it is where they make them, so there is a connection. Here we go again. This is known as the whoop section. Whoops! Now the crazy parking competition. 
some nice waving, and we'll give that piece of parking 7 out of 10. Let's see again how the driver notices the space, decides to go for it, and majestically backs the car into the slot. He's just spotted the parking meter, so away they go. Here's some not quite good parking. Starts off OK, but is let down by the finish. Can you spot what went wrong? Sometimes racing drivers fall asleep at the wheel. Here's the proof. Well, that's what you'd tell the team boss if it was you who'd done that to the car. Yeah, boss, uh, just went around the bend and sort of nodded off. That's all for now from Crash. See you next time.